We're breaking down the Buckeyes with Steve Hellwagon from 247 Sports uh, Bucknuts. Uh, we talk about Draymond Jones moving on to the NFL, moving on to the next level. We'll talk about some guys that are moving on to campus from the high school ranks to the next level. And, of course, we're just uh, one week away from National Signing Day, the early signing day, which took hold as the signing day in 2017. Your thoughts about the class that ranks number one in the Big Ten? Yeah, this is not a vintage Ohio State recruiting class. During much of Urban Meyer's time, they've been a top five uh, team in terms of recruiting. I think with all of the uh, upheaval that you had surrounding the program, it really hurt recruiting uh, for Ohio State. The uncertainty basically from mid-July on, Urban Meyer being suspended, then coming back and coaching uh, the balance of the regular season, his health issues, all of that kind of contributed to hurt Ohio State's recruiting, in my opinion. Uh, they probably lost a few guys that maybe in another year they would have locked up. Uh, still, it's a 16-man class as of today. Uh, probably be 20 to 22, I would think, by the time everything is done in February. They could add uh, a few more, a handful of guys between now and the February signing day. But as of right now, uh, they've got 16 guys lined up. Uh, as you said, it's the number one class in the Big Ten, number nine in the national ranking. So it could be another top ten class as they pass the baton from Urban Meyer to Ryan Day. Um, I guess you could say this is Urban Meyer's last class or you could say it's Ryan Day's first class. Uh, however you want to put it, he's going to be the guy that coaches them. And obviously for them to retain these guys, uh, they all now obviously know that uh, he will be their head coach going forward when they sign. I think it's a week from today, next Wednesday, the 19th. Uh, you look at it, uh, you know, they have got, uh, according to our list of 24-7 sports, at least four guys who are national top 100 players. When you're talking about the wide receiver, Garrett Wilson, uh, offensive lineman Harry Miller from uh, Buford, Georgia. Uh, you're talking about Jordan Battle, a safety from uh, St. Thomas Aquinas, and Doug Nestor, an offensive lineman from Huntington, West Virginia, Spring Valley High School. Those four guys in particular are national top 100 uh, players. Uh, Battle is May. Uh, it's kind of up in the air whether he's going to sign or not. Uh, may uh, keep his right open to sign in February uh, because of the coaching change, being very honest. Maybe want to keep his uh, options open and maybe take an official visit or to somewhere else. Nestor was originally going to enroll uh, in time for the start of the uh, winter semester. That may be on hold now as well as he kind of weighs through things as well. Uh, just outside the top 100, they do have uh, an outstanding prospect uh, from Lexington, Ohio, which is basically somewhere in between Columbus and Cleveland. Uh, if you can picture that, a linebacker, Kate Stover, Ohio's Mr. Football Award winner, an outstanding offensive and defensive player uh, this year. Kate Stover is also just outside the top 100. So they've got some star power here. They'd like to add more to it, certainly. And I know that Ryan Day and the coaching staff staff have been out there, uh, uh, you know, beating the bushes, basically. Uh, we showed up to interview players today. They had a light practice session today in helmets, T-shirts, and uh, shorts. They're just wrapping up uh, fall semester exams today and tomorrow. So they'll get back to hitting probably over the weekend. But Larry Johnson, the outstanding defensive line coach, who is uh, one of their top recruiters, he was walking into the building the same time I was, presumably coming in off the road. So uh, that'll tell you the efforts that are being put in uh, for Ohio State to wrap up at least the early signing period for the 2019 class and uh, try and get the best players they can get uh, in this 2019 class. Cade Stover, you mentioned him from Lexington uh, High School, Lexington, Ohio. The Lexington Minutemen, if I remember correctly from my days of calling uh, high school football and basketball there in North Central Ohio. Uh, let's see, four Buckeyes staying in the Buckeye State to play for Ohio State, two from Florida, two from Georgia, everybody else spread out amongst uh, the Midwest and the South. Uh, any um, storyline here in regards to, and, and I know this was brought to Urban Meyer's attention again in regards to keeping the best players in the state of Ohio and some of the challenges that he thinks are in play there. 
Yeah, you make a good point. This will be the second year in a row where there are not a lot of Ohio prospects. And my guess with uh, Ryan Day, that's something that they're going to go back and really uh, evaluate and look at and see are there difference maker type players from the state of Ohio that we are not getting. You look at Kentucky, um, they had an outstanding season this year and they're playing a lot of Ohio guys that perhaps in previous years would have ended up at Ohio State, but instead uh, ended up going to Kentucky. Uh, Purdue is getting uh, some outstanding guys out of Ohio as well. That's been a part of their uh, big turnaround as well. Uh, Michigan, Michigan State are always active. So is Penn State, Notre Dame. A um, couple interesting stories, I think, of the guys that they are getting. Uh, one of the Ohio players is Tommy Eichenberg. Uh, his brother is on the uh, squad at Notre Dame. I believe he's an offensive lineman uh, for them. Uh, Tommy Eichenberg, excuse me, he was committed to Boston College not long ago, but Ohio State uh, went back in there and uh, offered him a scholarship. Um, here near the end of the season, and he was able to accept that and will now be a part of Ohio State's class. So that's good, uh, obviously, to, to flip him. Another guy in this class that's a really interesting story, uh, his name is Cormonte Hamilton. He is from Tennessee. Uh, he is a tight end from Memphis, Tennessee, Whitehaven High School. And how bad did he want to be at Ohio State? This is not a guy who is necessarily a top-ranked prospect. In fact, uh, in his position group, he's only the number 29 uh, tight end, 6'2", 263 pounds. I'm going to call him a tight end, but my guess is they'll get him in and figure out uh, what position, whether offense or defense, will be the best place for him. But he wanted to be an Ohio State Buckeye so bad, he took a Greyhound bus from Memphis, Tennessee, up to Columbus to attend a summer camp to uh, impress uh, the tight ends coach, the offensive coordinator, Kevin Wilson, and uh, Urban Meyer, and earn a scholarship and uh, committed almost immediately when he was given a scholarship spot. So uh, there's a guy there uh, who, who checks some boxes in terms of intangibles and uh, can do and will do. And uh, that's a guy you can win a championship with if you get him into your program and develop him. So that's kind of a neat story, I think, for him. Uh, Ohio State has continued uh, to make some hay in the state of Indiana. Uh, Craig Young is an outstanding athlete prospect uh, from Fort Wayne, Indiana, Wayne High School. So he'll be part of this class as well. Uh, they've got another outstanding wide receiver, David Bell, from the state of Indiana that Ohio State may be uh, working on as well to try and get uh, either with this signing period or later on. He's just on the cusp of national top 100. You look at, uh, you know, Austin Mackis from Fort Wayne, Terry McLaurin on this team currently, uh, an outgoing senior is from Indianapolis. So the Buckeyes have gone into Indiana and stolen uh, some key prospects here in recent years and, and got one, I think, obviously with Young and potentially uh, with Bell as well, depending on how they do with him. Uh, you just look up and down this list, and I mean, it's impressive the way with Urban Meyer, you go into New Jersey, you go into Missouri, you go into Georgia, and you just go in there and, and uh, you know, uh, act like you're at home, basically, back in Texas with Garrett Wilson. Uh, he and Brian Hartline, the newly minted wide receivers coach, have a rapport, and he's going to play uh, for Ryan Day and Brian Hartline, uh, a national top 50 prospect. Garrett Wilson from Lake Travis in Austin, Texas, right there in the backyard of the University of Texas. So even though this has been kind of an up and down uh, recruiting cycle, it's obviously uh, going to work out, I think, for Ohio State in the end. And they've already got a few uh, top prospects lined up for 2020 as well. All right. A tremendous rundown of the Ohio State 2019 recruiting class, as Steve mentioned, 16 in the fold if they keep their commitments, and uh, it'll probably be a class of about 22. So the early signing day is taken hold as the signing day. Uh, we didn't know necessarily what to expect, but 2017 showed us that about 80% of the total signees for most of the Power 5 teams would sign on the dotted line on that early signing day, which is December 19th, uh, this time uh, around here in 2018. All right, Steve, uh, we appreciate you stopping by. Hopefully we can have you back a number of times before the Rose Bowl. 
Definitely. We'll, uh, we'll keep, uh, keep our head down and see what we can find out about Ohio State versus Washington. I want to do some deep uh, film study on uh, Washington. I got a couple of their games on DVR and really want to watch and, and see what they're all about. I know that uh, earlier in the year, they lost to Auburn, lost to Cal, lost to Oregon, but uh, very impressed the way that they finished the season with Washington State and Utah. And uh, I think uh, once Ohio State sits down and watches Washington on tape, they're going to be just as impressed and uh, have to go know that they'll have to go out and play their best game if they expect to beat them. <clears throat> Okay, we'll end it uh, with that.